Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. My blog is QBsQuest.com, and today is a wonderful day. We went out for a walk this morning, and I um, hope that you all have a beautiful weather too. I heard some of you got snow a couple of days ago. That's not fun this time of year, especially now that we're in spring. Like, I feel like once we pass spring, uh, that um, landmark, that um, we shouldn't get snow anymore, right? That, that should be the safe zone, but that's not always the case, is it? Um, so I hope that you're all um, having a great day so far. Today is Casing Tuesday, and that's when a group of us take a card out of the catalog and we give it a makeover. This is such a good exercise to do, whether you are a beginner or whether you are a seasoned stamper. This provides you with a starting point, and sometimes, like today's card, uh, is not not always what I would typically stamp. I um, I'll show you what the card is so you can see. This is not a card that I would typically come up with. Okay, let me move my head to the side a bit. So at first glance, you know, especially when you have a card in the catalog on a white background, some cards really don't pop. So I'll have to say that this card did not catch my eye at first. We have about a dozen of us that have committed to doing Casing Tuesday on a regular basis and every one of that dozen gets to pick a card and so this was someone else's pick and not that it's a bad card I actually really like the the layout or the sketch that we can derive from this but um, when you look at this at first it must be a beautiful card in person but those layers with those soft tones don't really pop especially against a white background so there's a lot of things that you can do with this this card sketch but on first glance it is a beautiful card it's just it doesn't pop out of the page for me so let's take down let's take a look at the layers of this card so there aren't really that many a lot of those layers um, were all that greenery and stuff so like what do you do with all of that and how can you make that into a card that that is beautiful so you do have that big open layer where you can put your focal point right in the middle. And then you have that smaller layer in the center where you have your greeting. Now that layer to me, I think is like a floater layer. You put that greeting or that layer, or you could put a bow there or um, whatever you want there. That is the floating layer. I, I don't think that necessarily has to go to, to the middle and it didn't in my case. So that is the sketch and that is to help you with dimensions. Some of us can take a look at a card and easily go, okay, this is gonna be four inches or kind of approximate. Um, and that's typically what I do. But I remember many years ago, I started out, I, I love doing sketch challenges over on um, a website and they had all the dimensions and that's when I really needed those dimensions because I did not could not figure them out easily myself especially um, since it was not something that I could measure right in front of me so it's really nice to have those dimensions right there for us okay I'm going to show you what I did with the card so here is my card Notice how I turned it. It originally was a, a horizontal card. And I, I, I could have done a horizontal card with this because the florals could go either way. But I thought it looked better as a vertical card. And then I just took that banner layer and I, I put it slightly off center just because I wanted to see more of the florals. And I... This is the first time I got to work with the Enduring Beauty Bundle. And the reason I bought it is not because I needed another flower set. I didn't. I have lots of flower sets. But the difference with this bundle is that it comes with masks. So if you're not a fan of coloring, you might be a fan of coloring 
with masks and using blending brushes and this creates a very soft look there are five masks that combine to create this soft coloring that i have on this card so i wanted to try that out that's why i bought this bundle so i'm so glad i got to use it on this card and then just combining it with um, a pool party background pool party is a very soft pleasing color it works well as a backdrop for many different um, focal points so um, i'm going to show you how to make this card and um, i i did take you know the layers they're kind of still there and represented it i just shifted them around and you are totally allowed to do that if you want to join us in case a card as well a look for um, the link in down below um, just look below and you might need to click on see more and there's a link to our casing tuesday facebook group um, and i posted the thread this morning where you can you need to post your card right underneath or if you're not ready to post and you want to see what other people have done with this particular sketch you are welcome to go there um, and leave a comment i know all of the stampers that post cards there really appreciate your comments so um, we'd love to have you comment on our cards and that that would really provide a really happy morale boost for everyone even if you're not posting your own card um, what else can i say oh i have a host code running as i always do and it is right here and if you spend $50 with me during the month of March, I will be sending you out these embellishments in April. And um, they usually arrive around mid-April because I have to get them in the house and I make a thank you card and I package them up and get them out. And um, I have to do that for a whole month's worth of people that have ordered from me. So it does take a little time. Um, if this embellishment is not available, then I choose something of equal equal or greater value, but it's always fun to have um, embellishments that you can use on your projects. I'm going to use some today. They add just a little sparkle and shine and just the little um, exclamation point on your card. All right, I think we're ready to get started. I can't wait to show you these masks and how fun they are to color with. All right, let's get started. Oh, don't you just love my card i i love the way the coloring turned out and i i have i have a feeling i love this card a lot because of the pool party background i really love that as a color okay we're going to start off with a crumb cake card base and this was 11 inches and i cut the cardstock at the four and a quarter inch mark and now i have also i've scored it at the five and a half inch mark you can see my score line right there and I'll just grab my bone folder and we'll smooth down that fold. We'll do um, the second layer that goes on this card too. This is a piece of Coastal Cabana. I thought it would just provide a teeny tiny bit of contrast to my card. Because um, I'm going to add Pool Party is going to be the backdrop. But I didn't want to do Pool Party and Pool Party. And I didn't want too much contrast. Um, if you didn't want to do Costa Cabana, maybe one of the pinks that I use in the card, like either um, Petal Pink or even Calypso Coral would look nice back here as well. That would provide a little bit more contrast. I wanted to keep, kind of keep the background very muted. Um, I'm going to hold on to this pool party piece though because we need to emboss that and I want to bring out my embossing machine only once. So let's just go ahead and glue this piece to the card. You probably want to know what this measures. Um, it is three and a quarter by five and a half. And I am leaving this piece just plain, but it, it really is a backdrop piece. So it's not um, really meant for anything. Most of it is actually being covered up. So I'm just gonna make sure that is straight. Okay. So we'll set this aside and now we're gonna do, we'll do the most important part of this card, which is the, um, um, the stamping. So I'm going to pull out, um, this is the big, big floral. I've mounted it on a, let's see, um, an F block. 
and we'll just go ahead and ink this up. So I like to ink it with it while it's facing up because it's a little um, easier to make sure that you've got everything. Okay, I think that's good. And we're just gonna, this is just a scrap piece of four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm gonna stand up while I do this and I'm gonna give this a little push down. I really want to make sure that ink is on here. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you start off with. And I just wanna point out, I've got the enduring Enduring Beauty bundle sitting right here. Um, this is, the bundle comes with the stamp set, the dies, and masks. And the masks, I'm gonna bring out one at a time because they've got, they've got ink on them. So let me just grab the first mask. They're all, they're all numbers. So this one has ink on, on it, so I didn't wanna um, get the ink all messy on my work surface. But, and they're all numbered. So you'll see down here, um, I guess, I wanna say, I'm gonna say I have these actually upside down. So, um, but you can see that there's a little chunk out and um, there's a number one. So maybe I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna see. Um, I think, yes. So, I had mine turned a different way. So this flower on the end goes down. If you want the number one to look, yeah, I can kind of tilt it so you can see it. The number one is up in the top corner. This is the way you should orient your piece. And you're just gonna lay it on your piece. And you wanna hug, this one hugs all of the flowers. So you just keep turning it until you've got a pretty good outline of all those flowers like that. Now you could tape this down if you wanted to. Um, you could tape your piece down to a piece of scrap paper or you know what? This would work really well um, with our glass mat. And our glass mat is actually coming um, back in the future and you will be able to purchase it. I, I won't bring out my glass mat today because it's not available, but this is kind of what you want to do. And then you're going to grab your lightest color. Um, and that's your, when you do masking um, or coloring this way, you want to start with the lightest color, go from light to dark. And so I've labeled, this is my blending brush and this one is petal pink. So we're going to start off with our petal pink color. And I probably could have used a re-inking on petal pink, but if you're doing it this methodology without taping it down, you're gonna have to be a bit careful that you're holding down both your mask and your white piece underneath. So I'm just coming in. If you think, if yours is a newly inked ink pad, I would daub off on the side before going on the flower. Um, and you can pull off ink from the mask onto your project too, because that's where the extra ink goes. You can pull it and bring it onto your project. And you just want to work this until you feel like you've reached the color saturation you want, right? And um, you can also use, we also have small blending brushes. I'm using, I'm using the big ones on, on this project today. These blending brushes have little tiny, tiny, tiny bristles on them. They're a little different than using a sponge dauber. Look at that. You know, when I have this on here, it barely looks colored at all. And then you take it off and like, voila. So that's the first layer of those blending 
blending mask and then we're gonna take this and see it says number two so number two right up at the top so we're gonna switch this and I'm gonna use granny apple green okay, I've labeled my my brushes so you're gonna take this and just kind of wrap it around those leaves shifted a teeny tiny bit there we go granny apple green and we're gonna dip into here and we'll start coloring those leaves This is actually quite fun. It would be easier if I taped this down, but I'm too lazy. So you just have to make sure you don't shift it. All right, I shifted a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, look at that. It already looks good just like that, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go to number three little notch at the top which points right to the number right so that's very helpful we're going to take our next darkest color which we're going to use calypso coral so i have a blending brush for all the different colors that i'm using because i don't like to muddy them you can though um, wash these like rinse them off and get the color off and then use them with different colors the one thing you'll have to be careful of with these is you will want to let the brushes dry so if you're using different colors on the same day it's probably better to have more blending brushes so that you don't have to um, wait for them to dry Okay, so I am just gonna kind of twist this now till I get, I can kind of see like the little peak marks. Okay, I think, I think that looks pretty good. I have to kind of just twist it. Oh, I think I've almost got it right. Okay, so now pin this down. This is Calypso Coral. And it, of course, it, it, it's hard to tell what's, what it's doing now because we don't have white underneath now. So now we're layering on those colors. The reason I think that um, they designed it so you do the leaves second and this um, third is that way it gives a chance for each layer to dry a little bit. And I'm pouncing down a little bit, getting deepening those colors. All right, let's see what this looks like. Ooh, pretty, very, very pretty. Okay. So you can play around with how intense you want the color. I think when I did my other layer before, I want, I want a little lighter. So you can see how much color you want to lay down with each one. Okay, let's try. Next, we're going to Old Olive. And we'll grab our next mask. Number four. Try and make it easy for us, right? to um, do this and this one you're going to see you're going to actually be able to color the stems so this one's easy because you can kind of match up with all of those little stems make sure all the little stems are visible in those little spots all right Grab old olive, grab my old olive brush and pin. And we're gonna go over each of these spots. Layering on that color. I'm 
pounce, pounce, pounce. Make sure I got everything. Voila, next layer. And then finally, I'm going to add a little bit of um, the last mask is for the flowers right here. It's this one. So this one you just kind of lay on there and this one for me is a little teeny bit harder to line up. There's not quite as many landmarks. Oh, that's pretty good. So you just kind of kind of get it in the vicinity. I'm going to use Poppy Parade and let's see if I can find my brush. Okay, this one I think I'm going to do more of a pouncing motion. Okay. One more there. Okay. That is all there is to it. So we have a beautiful floral and you can like practice with the intensity of each of the um, layers. I think looking at this one, I probably would have gone a little lighter on my Calypso Coral or a little heavier on the Petal Pink. You know what we can do though? I'm gonna bring back, I know I said move from um, light to dark, but I think I need a little bit of, I wanna go a little darker with my petal pink, because I feel like it just got a little washed out. So let's go ahead and add just a little bit more petal pink, because I don't want the contrast to be so much between the light and the dark. So, we make it darker. All right, there we go. I think that's a little better because now there's a little bit, the intensity is, is where I need it to be. So I just fixed it so it's a little bit more to my liking. And now we're gonna take this die and we'll cut this out. I also wanna stamp my greeting, so I'm gonna do that because I also need to die cut that out. And for my greeting, there were some beautiful greetings in the Enduring Beauty stamp set, but what I really need is birthday cards. So this is a new um, online exclusive that we have called Sweetly Scripted. It reminds me of some stamp sets that we had many years ago with Stampin' Up! that had kind of these long scripty words. And I loved those stamp sets. I think there were two with four words each. These are a teeny tiny bit smaller, but I love that you can stamp these right across a card. I'm gonna use these on a label though, but I love, I love these long greetings that you can just effortlessly put on a card. So I'm going to take um, my happy birthday, it's quite a large stamp. I'm going to grab Old Olive and we'll just go ahead and ink this up. And I didn't need to use such a big strip of cardstock, but I just did not want to have to get out scrap paper to have something on the end. So if you wanted to use a smaller piece and then just stamp with on a piece of scrap paper so your ink doesn't go all over your work surface you can do that all right i think we've got everything that we need because we're going to cut this out cut this out and then we're also going to emboss this layer on the die cutting machine so let's just move these two aside for just a second and i'm going to grab my plates Grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Let's do the die cutting first. And we're going to grab our base plate number one, then die adapter number two. Put that in the machine. We're going to need two clear plates. Let's put one on the bottom and we'll grab our, let's line these all up. 
let's see, this one goes this way. We'll just line this up and then I'm going to tack it with some, um, this is, uh, everything's so tight in here today. Labeling and cover up tape or the top of a post-it note helps to keep your die from shifting as you're putting the top plate on and running it through the machine. So I'm just going to align and then we're going to pin so it doesn't shift. Put the clear plate on top and we'll run this through. Snap, crackle, pop. And there is the beautiful floral image. It looks like it, it came right out of a piece of paper. That's how beautiful it is. And then we'll also grab our happy birthday. Slide this back. You can crank through both in both directions, but I like to go through in this direction. So we'll just go with that. So I'm just kind of lining that up. It's a very scripty happy birthday. So if it's not 100% straight, it's not going to matter. That label die right there also comes in the die set with the Enduring Beauty um, bundle. So you have a label, you don't need an extra one. And there's my little happy birthday. Get that ready. And then we want to do um, embossing of that pool party layer. So it's a thick embossing folder. So we're gonna get rid of um, the thin die adapter and these clear plates. They don't work with the big embossing folder. So I'll just tuck those away into my box. And this is the plate that you're gonna need for on top. It's a number four plate. And we'll grab, these are, um, this is a set of three embossing folders and this one has the crosshatch pattern. This one's a really great neutral pattern. I use it a lot. Um, Basics 3Ds. And then this piece measures three and three quarter inches by five inches. And it's just a piece of regular pool party. Um, we'll pop that in the folder and put it in there. You notice I usually like to, if there's room, I'll put my embossing folder through on an angle because it goes through the roller better if you have room. If it's a six inch wide embossing folder, you can't do that. And then you'll just, you might hear a clunk clunk when it goes through. So remember, um, it's on the base platform number one with no clear plates and I'm just putting my number four plate right on top. Um, your four plate will come with your machine so um, you don't need to purchase anything extra to use it. It will be in your stamping cut and boss machine and there is the nice textured layer which is going to look lovely as a backdrop to our flowers. Okay, putting stuff away. Okay, let's pop the machine out of the way too. Let's bring in what we've got here. And come in here and we're going to glue this centered onto the card. So I'll just grab my glue. Now, I don't know what you use for adhesive, but this glue that Stampin' Up! sells, the Tombow Multi Liquid Glue, is the best thing, I think, for sticking things down. Nothing's coming off with this glue when you glue it with paper. I have a stock on hand all the time. I have a drawer. I probably have five glue bottles in there right now. The funny thing about Tombow though is I don't go, it does, it like it lasts for a very, very long time before the bottle's empty, but I just always want to make sure I have enough on hand. There was a time when there was a bit of a Tombow shortage, and so it's nice to have like you know, sometimes supply and demand. Um, I always want to make sure I have my little green and white bottle handy. 
So I'm going to turn this, I, I, I want to have it facing like this. And I will adhere this a little bit off to the left, coming off just a little teeny tiny bit. Um, that way I have a little bit more room to see the florals and to add my label on there. So I'll just add the glue and I'll just kind of decide where I want to put it, kind of centering it from top to bottom. Stick it on there. Oh, it's so beautiful. All right, make sure we do this the right way around. And then the label, you can put it wherever you want. I think I put mine, my first one, just a teeny tiny bit below this blossom here. Now again, we'll use glue. You could use dimensionals if you wanted to. Oh, shoot, I dropped that. Thankfully, I dropped it right in an area where I was already, there might be a little tiny bit of glue there. If that ever happens to you, it doesn't happen to me too often, but if that ever happens to you, if you have a little tiny bit of glue, um, you can use an adhesive eraser. Let me grab mine. I have an adhesive eraser. And I'm going to use you just want to let it dry just a little bit and you can use um, get an adhesive eraser or even a white eraser will help you remove any there's just a teeny tiny bit right there it will just help you remove that adhesive um, right off of your car just make sure it's uh, dry get get the most of the blob off first because that can happen dropping things before they're supposed to stick onto cards. Okay, and then I've got, I tied a baker's twine bow ahead of time. So we'll just, we're gonna position that right there. And I will use glue for that too. I'm gonna just decide where I'm gonna put a dot of glue. And that is where my knot is gonna go, right on that glue blob. And I'll just kind of hold that there for a few seconds. I like using Tombow with, with Baker's Twine. I do find it holds really well if you have enough glue and it sticks down. And then we're gonna grab some of these Iridescent Pearls Basic Jewels. And we'll just grab A big pearl I think I'm not sure if there's I think there's two sizes of pearls on here um, this is the end of my pack because I've already used them quite extensively and um, they come there's kind of I think there's two types of pearls on here there's the ones that are really shiny and some that are like a little bit more matte okay and there is my card. So beautiful. And it's a different way to color if you don't like to use markers or blends or water coloring. You could do all of those methods with this floral. So you can see um, this one is quite a bit darker. I, I worked it quite a bit more than I did my original one but both of them are pretty. It, it almost looks like I cut this floral right out of some beautiful designer series paper. So it really has a nice look to it. So that is, just to remind you, that is like the Enduring Beauty bundle. And that comes with, I'm gonna put my dies back on here. Um, you've got you got extra leaves, you got a label, and you got some nice greetings. Um, or if you want, you can use sweetly scripted. That also has like really useful greetings like happy birthday, a million thanks, speedy recovery, congratulations. Those will all be very useful greetings. And then it also comes with um, that bundle, the original bundle. Does not come with the sweetly scripted stamp set, but the Enduring Beauty, Beauty Bundle comes with these masks that you can use for coloring. 
or buy all the pieces individually, which is another way to go. But when you buy a bundle, you save 10% over buying it individually. So I always recommend saving money if you can. All right, I'm gonna come back over to you and say hello. I hope you had a look at those masks and said, yay, I want to try that. Because as soon as I saw what they were for, I was like, I want to do that. Um, and it did not disappoint. This was the perfect card to do it on. If you don't like my color choices, you could do it in purples. I think I'm looking at my purple selection. Um, Fresh Freesia Highland Heather Gorgeous Grape would make a really nice combo. Um, for that or you could go more towards like um, uh, like the a pink without the the yellow in it you could do um, bubble bath melon mambo and berry burst for your florals um, I do like old olive for the leaves but and granny apple green but that's not your only choice we also have a lot of different greens to choose from so um, don't think that those colors are are in, in um, etched in granite is what I wanted to say. All right, let's um, let's say hello to everyone and see how you're doing today. Good morning, Tony and Debbie and Mary and Nancy. Oh, I'm so sorry about to hear about Baltimore. I saw it really briefly before I went live this morning. Um, uh, that is um, just terrible about the um, bridge collapse. Um, yes, um, my heart goes out to um, everyone involved. I didn't have a, a big chance to look at it. I just noticed it and I was busy getting ready. So I thought, okay, let's not get my heart engaged too much in all of that because I need to um, I need to go live and not too too late so I'm, I'm sorry Nancy um, uh, about um, to hear that um, good morning Beverly um, good morning Denise from South Dakota um, and Leigh also um, says her heart and prayers goes out to Malt Baltimore uh, Marty says she has to leave early. Oh, she has to take her cat to the vet. I hope your cat is okay, Marty. Um, lots of um, love and prayers to Baltimore. Um, Brenda, good morning from um, Ontario, Canada. Good morning, Karen. Um, Marty says you can color over the number on the stencil with a black permanent marker and then you wipe it off. The ink stays in the number so you can see the number easily. Oh, that's a great tip. So what Marty's talking about is up top here where I've got my little tiny thing, that little number one right there. Um, you can color over that maybe with a Sharpie and then wipe off the excess. Um, and then the, the black will stay or whatever color you use will stay in the, the little indent and then you'll be able to see your numbers more clearly. That's a great little tip. Um, and Denise says so too. And Karen says gorgeous coloring and it wasn't hard at all, right? Um, okay, Diane says very pretty. Marty says beautiful. Denise says that's better. Um, good luck, Marty. I know you had to leave early. I hope um, your cat is okay. Um, hi Ellie, good morning. Oh, you know what? Um, you are, I think more people are watching me on YouTube now. I do have a bigger following on YouTube than I do on Facebook because I am not so great at always engaging on Facebook with the, the social media. Um, so I think my, my YouTube channel is, is much bigger, but I, I stream to both so that we have, I have a presence in, in both areas so you can watch me where, wherever you want to. So that's why you were all alone, Helly. I'm sorry. Um, good morning, Mary. She says pretty card. We have more than one Mary on here today. Um, you have 60 degrees in Indiana today. Oh, that's pretty warm for this time of year. How nice for you. Um, good morning, Debbie. Um, Ellie says, good morning from Chile, Connecticut. Uh, 
Yes, it's it's kind of chilly here too, um, Ellie. It was um, around freezing this morning, um, but we still went for a walk. Denise says, beautiful card. And Ellie says, um, heartfelt prayers to Baltimore. And she has relatives there, um, but thankfully none involved. Yeah, um, thankfully. Um, uh, I It's uh, terrible, terrible tragedies. Like, it just yikes. I'm so sorry for everyone. Um, good morning, Janine. Mary said... Um, she embossed the outline in in oh embossed the outline in gold looks real good too. Um, I think you mean maybe the outline of the floral. You could dip it in embossing flower and oh no 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 not even that. I'm thinking different things. You could do the um, instead of stamping in black, do the outline of the flower and gold embossing folder, and then it would really pop. And those golden elements would be just really beautiful. Yeah, that's a really good idea, Mary. Um, I right now Stampin' Up um, is switching embossing powder suppliers. So I have not been using a lot of embossing powder right now because it is out of stock at the moment. We will be getting it back in um, at some point. I'm not sure if it will be available right when the new catalog goes live, but we will be carrying embossing powders again. It's just I try not to use things that aren't available because it's just frustrating. So when I'm live, I try to use things that are available currently when I go live and who knows what it will be a week from now, but right now um, uh, the things that I'm using should be available. The Enduring Beauty Bundle is um, staying around into the new catalog cycle. It is going to unbundle itself in May. So if you want to have that um, pricing of the 10% uh, off, um, of get, getting the bundle versus buying the stamps, the dies, and the mask separately. Um, make sure that you get it now because um, once it goes into the new catalog, once the old catalog ends, we will just have those individual products available rather than the bundle. That was, I needed to repeat that twice. I don't know why I need to repeat things um, in so many different ways. It's just my nature. So I wish you all a wonderful day. If you are watching me on YouTube, I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Uh, ring the notification bell so that you know when I go live next. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I really appreciate that. Um, it helps other people find me um, when you do that. And, and thank you so much. If you're looking for any of the products that I use today, check down below in the description of this video. I have them all listed for you there and if you click over to my blog you'll even see a photo supply list so you can see exactly what you're going to click on before you actually click on it all right i hope you all have a great week i have um good friday is coming up i haven't decided whether i'm going to record a video or do a live video on good friday um, but i will have something for you on friday i'm just not sure what i'm gonna do yet um but i know some of you might have it off as a holiday so um i I'm, i might just go ahead and go go live on on good friday um so we'll We'll just have to see um, what I end up deciding to do for this week. I'll, I'll decide that tomorrow and, and get my project ready. Have a good week until then. And happy Easter if I don't see you on Friday. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.